Well, that's another batch of cheese paste made up and I couldn't possibly go through the winter without a few chub fishing trips. Although I like fishing for all the species in the winter, I like my pike fishing, my roach fishing, my perch fishing. I think the best thing about chub fishing is however cold it gets, they're normally quite accommodating. You can normally get a bite off a chub. So when there's ice on the ground, even snow on the ground, chub is always a species that will give you a bite in the harshest of weather. My first trip out was to a stretch of my local River Wensum. It's a stretch that I've fished on and off for probably over 20 years now. I got there fairly early as the sun was coming up and made a beeline for some of my favourite swims. I think you tend to get drawn back to swims that have been kind in the past, so I felt it was a good place to start. We've had a very wet winter this year. It seems as if it's raining nearly every other day and the river had recently been well up over the fields. And if I'm honest, I didn't expect it to still be quite so high. There was a lot of water on the field still. The ground was still very boggy and muddy. And in some places you were wading through a lot of flood water, trying to see where the flood water stopped and the river began. That The river was definitely a lot higher than I expected it to be. I headed up to the top of the stretch to begin with which seemed really flooded. This is where the fields were sort of mostly underwater. There's some really nice bends and there's a nice bit of structure. I think it's a pumping station or something, but it was a case of trying to find some slack water, the inside of the bends behind trees. The chub would be, wouldn't be particularly happy sitting in that really fast flow and it, a lot of it seemed quite unfishable. So I think my first step that day was to get a bite. You know, I like to think I'm fishing for big chub, but first step is catching a chub. I didn't stay in those first swims all that long. Although they have been good swims in the past, they were, they were completely different today. The, the rod was bent over in the heavy flow and they just didn't feel right for a bite. I find with this style of chub fishing, if there's a chub in the swim, the bite normally comes quite quickly and they didn't feel like they were going to do a bite. Far too much water flowing through them. So I soon packed my gear down and I was on the move with my newfound mate, which was the farmer's Jack Russell, who decided he wanted a day's chub fishing with me. And I headed down the river and I was looking for some slack water. I know I keep mentioning it, but when the river's flooded, the chub will tuck themselves behind trees on the inside of bends. They're trying to get out of that real heavy flow. So I think the key was to keep on the move until I found the right spot. I kept working my way along the stretch, dropping in all the likely looking spots. And to be honest, a couple of swims I fished, I felt I should have got a bite of it. I'd have normally got a bite by now, but I think the extra water was making it quite difficult fishing. The River Wensum is, is very much different to what it was, say, 15 years ago. And a lot of those swims would have been guaranteed bites in the past, but it is what it is now. And there's still chub to be had, and there's still one or two big chub to be had. And it's such a nice day's fishing, wandering along the upper river, trying to get the quiver tip to pull round. So tried not to get too disheartened and I kept moving along and kept trying different swims. And eventually I found another nice looking swim where there was a nice slack behind a bush that came out on my own bank. So trying to keep confident, this did look good for a bite and I kept my fingers crossed. location is everything and it proved it in this swim. I, I put a piece of the cheese paste on, cast it out in the slack water behind these bushes and it couldn't have been in the water no more than 30 seconds say and, and suddenly the fishing seemed really easy. You cast out a bit of cheese paste in the right spot, the tip pulls round and you're connected to your first chub. Finally got one. He's hanging in this fast flow quite nicely. Doesn't feel massive. I'm just going to have a bite, if I'm honest. I do like chub fishing in the winter, they chug around. It goes. You certainly know where the snags are as well. They always try and get under your own bank. Oh, there you go. It's been very difficult to see the bites today because it's been very windy, so luckily it was quite a positive bite. Any little 
gentle bites would be hard to see. He's not far off me now, let's... Here he comes. Oh, here we are. At last, a bite and a fish. It's been a long while coming this morning, this first chub, with the how windy it is and the river carrying a bit of extra water, it's been quite difficult. So I'm um, very pleased to get off the mark, although it's not a big chub, maybe three and a half to four pound perhaps. It's a chub and it's off the Wensum, which is uh, becoming more difficult at the moment. Although that chub wasn't the biggest chub in the river Wensum, it definitely lifted my spirits. You know, it was, a, it was that bite that I talked about, the first step of getting a bite. One little tip I will give people when they're chub fishing that, in my mind, can make a difference. If I've caught a chub out of a particular swim, it always pays to take it a bit further down river when you put it back. Sometimes you can get an extra bite out of that swim. I, I find if you put it back in the exact same swim, I feel it spooks any other fish that might be there. So I took it down river and, and released that one and thought I'd have another go in the same swim. But sadly, he must have been on his own in there. I never had no more bites in that swim. Carried on fishing that afternoon, dropping in a few more lightly looking spots, but with the conditions being how they were, no more bites came my way. And it got me thinking at the end of the day, if I want to catch a bigger chub, I think maybe I need to jump in the car and travel a little bit further afield. Having never fished the ewes before, it made sense for me to head down to Angling Direct in Milton Keynes to speak to Jack, who's the manager in there, to give us some pointers. Jack kindly sorted me out a club book for a couple of stretches of the river ooze, got a few maps up on the computer and gave me a few pointers in the right direction, ready for my first session ever on the river ooze. I made my way to that first stretch of the river ooze that morning, parked up the van and walked through the woods to the river. And if I'm honest, I felt quite anxious. The, the river had obviously been in flood recently and it was still very high, chocolate brown and absolutely hammering through, which my knowledge of chub fishing probably meant it was gonna be another difficult day. But with any of this type of sort of specimen fishing, sometimes you only need one bite for it to be a brilliant day's fishing. And on a river like the Ouse, that one bite could be a really big chub. I made my way down the stretch Fishing with my ever faithful cheese paste, something that I'm really confident in. I always feel it's a case of just putting it in the right swim where the chub are and they'll have it almost straight away. I was looking for those features that the chub like, whatever river I'm on, overhanging trees, bends, creases, you get an eye for a good chub swim. So if I hadn't had a bite within 15 or 20 minutes in a swim, I'd keep on the move. I felt that the bite would come fairly quickly if I was in the right swim. After several moves down the river, I dropped into a swim that just ticked all the right boxes. Up river of the swim was a lot of tree cover, and then under my own bank was a real nice deep bit of slack water. And I'll be honest, when I put my chair up in that swim, I really did feel confident. Although I hadn't had a bite all morning, if I didn't get a bite in this swim, where would I get a bite? And true to form, it hadn't been out there long, and I finally hooked my first River Ooze chub. starting to worry with the water being so coloured and having never fished the ooze before. So I was quite relieved that I've had a bite. It may not be the biggest chub in the ooze, but it's my first ever chub from the ooze. 
and so my confidence is a bit higher now. Hopefully we can get a bite and get a slightly bigger one, but over the moon to be off the mark on a new river for me. I guess he's a little fella about three and a half pounds, but first thing you've always got to get is a bite. We'll get this one back and see if we can find a bigger one. I stayed in that swim a bit longer where I got my first bite. And although I did have a couple more inquiries on the quiver tip, I never connected with anything else. So I made my way further down the river. The next good looking spot was where a carrier stream joined the main river. So we crossed the metal bridge over the carrier stream and tried a couple of swims just past it, which had a bit of slack wall, which seemed to be the key to the last bite. I did manage another bite, but believe it or not, this chub was even smaller. If I'm honest, the further down the stretch I went, the narrower the river got, and with all the extra water coming through, it just seemed so fast. So it got me thinking maybe tomorrow morning, I needed to find a slightly wider stretch of the river, somewhere that could cope with that extra water a bit better, because I just didn't feel I was ever gonna catch a chub in that really fast flowing narrow part of the river. That evening, I went out for a bite to eat with Chris, and it got us thinking really. I, I felt I fished that stretch quite well the first day, but I didn't feel particularly close to a big chub. And I'd been told of another stretch close by that the chances of a big chub were on the cards, although it's supposed to be quite difficult fishing. But looking at the stretch on Google Earth, it looked much wider and a much more open stretch of the river that I felt would cope with the flood water a bit better. So we, we kind of adopted the attitude of go big or go home. I, I didn't mind a struggle. I mean, we've been struggling and catching three pounders. So we might as well go on to the, the big boy stretch and struggle for a big chub on the last day. The next morning, I was up bright and early and making my way to the, to the last stretch, if you like. And it was quite a long walk from where we parked the van across the very icy fields, I might add. It was a very cold, frosty morning. It didn't affect my confidence though, as I've previously mentioned, however cold it gets, chub will normally feed. So I made my way through some very frozen fields till I got to the river. And if I'm honest, it looked much more promising from the off. Once I'd walked across those fields and got to the river, my plan was to walk all the way up the river to the top of the stretch, and then start fishing at the top, leapfrogging my way back to the car at the end of the day. I couldn't resist dropping in one of the first swims I saw, if I'm honest. It looked really good for a bite. It was quite a, an open straight with one overhanging tree on my own bank. So I had 15 or 20 minutes in there to begin with, and I did get a, a slight inquiry on the quiver tip. I felt there was a fish there, but I missed, if it was a bite, I missed it. And I dropped a bit of bait in there, a few balls of cheese paste, and I thought to myself, I'll definitely drop back in here later this afternoon when we get back down to it. But the stretcher river definitely looked a lot more fishable and a lot more promising than the first day. I think the problem is all the swims looked really good. You could see the river was still carrying a lot of colour. This was really noticeable where a small stream joined the main river. The, the main river was almost like a wall of colour where the clear water joined it. You could see how high it had been recently by the debris that was hanging three or four foot up the branches of a lot of the overhanging trees. So it obviously been in flood quite a bit this winter. I really enjoy this style of chub fishing. The, the travelling very minimalistic, having one rod and reel, rucksack and net, and keeping constantly on the move. You're using that rod and reel to read the river, you're, you're searching. When you drop in a swim, you're perhaps in a short space of time, have two or three casts, you know, on, the, on your inside bank, in the middle, the far bank, searching one particular swim quite quickly. And on this stretch of river, it just seemed to hold a little bit of magic for me. I felt if that quiver tip did pull round, there's every chance it could be the biggest chub I've ever caught. So every time that quiver tip nodded or plucked, my heart started to beat a little bit more than it would on my rivers at home. 
I, I kept feeling that the next bike could be something really special. It had got to about lunchtime on that last day on the River Ouse, and if I'm honest, I felt I should have caught one by now. I, I felt I'd fluffed a couple of bites in those first swims, and I was starting to feel a little bit dejected. You know, we'd travelled a long way and put a lot of effort in, and caught two very small chub for the river the first day. So, um, I'll be honest, the first proper bite came well and truly out of the blue. I was sitting in another swim, not much had happened, and I couldn't have really missed that first proper bite. It was a, a couple of little taps on the quiver tip, and then it just sailed round. Um, and as soon as I struck into it, it was obvious it was a, a much better fish. It, it was hanging in that heavy flow, and it was taking line off the clutch, heading down river, and I kind of lost my cool a little bit, if I'm honest. I, I'd waited a long while for that moment. So I jumped out of the chair, and I ran down river playing the fish, making sure it didn't get in all the snags on the far margin. Um, and when this nice big chunky river roof chub popped up, I suddenly forgot that my landing net was probably 20, 30 yards up river. So you suddenly forget you've got cameras pointing at you and, and the cameraman had to become the netsman quickly and throw me the landing net. So that first bite and that first proper chub was a little bit panic stations. I was so relieved when it went in the landing net and looking at the width and the depth of that chub, it was definitely the fish that we'd been after and it was a massive weight off my shoulders to get a proper chub at last. I don't think I've ever been so pleased to see the quiver tip pull around. It's been really hard fishing this morning. I think I might have missed a bite. I didn't miss this bite. And he, uh, he pulled my arm off in this fast flow. The river's still fairly high. So um, that's mega, just under six and a half pound at six pound seven. That'll be my, my third ever chub off the ooze. I caught my first two yesterday that were both very small. But how about that one? I'm over the moon with that one. And to think there's chub bigger than that in this river is, is mad. That's a, in my world, that's a big chub. As I slipped that big chub back, it felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. There is always a certain amount of pressure when you're, especially when you're being filmed on these trips, you, you know, you want to pull a rabbit out of the hat, but it is fishing at the end of the day and you can't force it to happen. But I'm not sure, I dropped 50 yards down river because that whole stretch looked quite good where we just caught that one and obviously confidence was high. And isn't it funny, you wait ages for a bus and then two come along at once. I pretty much sat in that next spot down and the tip pulled round almost straight away and I was connected to yet another big River Ouse chub. With the weight being lifted off my shoulders and having caught a nice chub, I enjoyed playing this one a lot more and was a bit calmer playing it. And when I slid it into the landing net, it looked like it could possibly be another six pound chub. And suddenly things were heading the right way. Another, another six pounder. Six four, six five. This one, uh, probably about six pound five, I'd say. Brace of sixes. Brilliant. We well, wait ages for a bite. All morning, in fact. And shortly after that first one, there's another six pound chub at six pound five. That one. Beautiful chub here on the ooze really deep in the flanks. It's gone from looking fairly disastrous to two very small chub yesterday to a brace of sixes today. So pays not to give up and keep trying. After that brace of six pounders, I stuck to the plan of making my way down river, getting closer and closer to where the van was parked, dropping in any swim that looked as if it could produce a bite or two and it wasn't long before it was fast approaching dusk and I was back in that first swim that I'd started off in in the morning where I'd missed a tiny little bite. 
I put a little bit of cheese paste in there in the morning and just left it. So I had to have another cast. It was rude not to have another cast in there, which would probably be my last swim of the day. This time when I cast out in there, I had one of those same tentative tiny little bites that I thought might have been crayfish. But with nothing to lose, I thought I'm gonna try striking it. So a few tiny little taps and tiny little pulls on the quiver tip, struck into it and suddenly it was a tug of war. I was connected to my third chub of the day that was doing its best to get under the bushes that I'd hooked it next to. And it was one of those horrible fights where you can feel the line grating against the branches of the tree. And it was just a relief when I steered it away from the tree and watched it go in the landing net. And that was chub number three safely in the net. Brilliant. Well, there we go, six pounder number three for the day. And one of my famous last casts couldn't resist just stopping at these overhanging trees. It looked really good for a bite. I think it just shows you that effort equals reward. Had I not made the journey to the River Ouse, I wouldn't have caught three six pounders in a day. So I hope anyone who watched this video enjoyed it. And get yourself some cheese paste and go out there and try and catch some big chub before the end of the season. I think the secret to catching big chub is fishing where big chub live. That's definitely what I've learned today. Really pleased with that, another really nice looking river ooze chub. Looking back at the, the trips that I've had on camera, starting off on my local river Wensum, where it all seemed very challenging to say the least, with the extra flood water, and then traveling all the way to the ooze and the first day yet more flood water, and not knowing whether these conditions are productive on the ooze, having never fished the river before, it was fairly challenging fishing and I worked really hard for those first couple of bites and felt quite unlucky for them to be such small fish for the river. But it goes to prove you're only one bite away from a real special fish and you've just got to keep going and keep trying. And I can't explain the relief when one of those big fish goes in the net when you've worked so hard. We'll be driving home that evening, a real happy bunny, a hat trick of six pound chub. I don't think I've ever done that locally. I've, I've probably had a brace of six pounds before, but I've never had three in a day. So however difficult your chub fishing or any fishing might seem at times, don't give up because you only need one bite and it could be that personal best fish and suddenly it's your best day's fishing. So that the moral is keep trying because you're only one bite away from a big end.